In this video, I want to give you seven different tips about what you need to know when it comes to living in Utah during the winter months. We're going to cover a lot of information here in this video. So as we jump in, I just want to say my name's Cody Steck. I want to be your trusted real estate resource when it comes to buying or selling real estate here in Utah. All right. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into this and talk a little bit about what you need to know. Now, if you already live here, some of these things might be obvious to you or you might already know them. But if you live out of state, maybe you're coming from a warmer area where you don't get snow, you don't get cold weather, these things will probably be really Really helpful for you and it will give you a head start when you get to uh, the state here once you actually move here right so the first thing i want to talk about is uh, you do need four-wheel drive when it comes to having a vehicle here in the in the winter months now you can get away with a two-wheel drive vehicle but you definitely are going to need snow tires or at the very least all season tires this is an absolute must guys if you're driving out there during the snow it, it does get pretty icy and it can uh, get pretty bad out there on the streets right so if you do not have a four-wheel drive vehicle you are absolutely going to need all season tires or winter tires, snow tires at the very minimum. Now, that being said, if you do have four wheel drive, I still recommend having some good tires on the vehicle, at least all season tires or snow tires are even better um, to really give you that traction that you need here in the winter. If you're trying to get around with just regular tires on a two wheel drive vehicle, it is not going to work. You're going to slide off the road. You're going to get stuck. You're going to crash into somebody. It's not going to work. So please try not to make that mistake. Go out there, spend the money on a good set of tires or have a vehicle that is going to be able to handle that snow when it starts coming down. All right, number two on our list here also has to do with driving and with cars. We actually just had our first major snowstorm here yesterday. And when I was driving home from the office, I was looking around thinking, wow, it seems like everybody forgot how to drive in the snow. Those first couple snowstorms, everybody seems clueless. Everybody's driving way too fast. They're way too confident. They think they've got more grip on their cars and they just don't know what's going on. They seem to be very cautious. And usually it goes back to that first point. You usually get one, two, three people on the road who don't have you know snow tires they don't have an adequate vehicle to handle this and so they're sliding all over the place and they're driving super slow they're going five miles an hour when everybody else is trying to go 15 or 20 and so traffic just gets super bad that kind of leads me into the next thing i wanted to talk about which is the traffic can get bad for me my drive from my office to home generally takes about 15 minutes if there's no traffic if there's traffic i'm probably 25 minutes if it's uh, you know during rush hour however yesterday it took me almost 55 minutes to get home in that same amount of time. So it was almost triple what it should be because of the snow. This is because we were driving, you know, five, 10 miles an hour on roads that are normally 35 to 45 miles an hour. So traffic can get bad. If there's a wreck on one of these main roads, you can be screwed. If there's a wreck on I-15 or I-80, uh, you might be sitting in that traffic for a couple of hours. My assistant actually had this exact thing happen yesterday. He said it took him three hours to get home. Now he lives a little bit further away, but this is just absolutely crazy. So this is something you have to plan for and just be aware of if you are trying to make that commute, um, you know, this might not be the best time to do it if you're trying to drive in a snowstorm. So just be aware of that. If you, uh, you know, are going to be going into the office every single day, you might want to live a little bit closer so that you can avoid these longer commute times if there's weather uh, or traffic because of that. All right, next up on our uh, list here is going to be something uh, getting away from the actual driving aspect of winter. Uh, you don't want to put snow melt down on concrete. Now, this is something that I think is fairly common in other areas, but here in Utah, this is something that you don't want to do. There's going to be a lot of people out there who push this. They do put salt down and sand on the roads here in Utah, depending on where you're at. They use different material, but they do put these things out on the road and it can help increase grip and it will also help, you know, make sure that it's not icy. But when it comes to like your driveway, your sidewalks, I do not recommend putting down um, ice melt on these surfaces. The reason why is it's really going to break up that concrete. It's going to destroy the concrete. And if you do this for five, 10 years, you're going to have a driveway that looks like crap. So just be careful with that. I recommend shoveling your driveway before you get home, before you start driving over it, make sure to go out there and shovel it. Just get at least the top layer off. If you have a little bit, that's okay, but um, you don't want to be putting ice melt down on these concrete surfaces. The other point that I should make about that is that if you have a driveway that faces north, that's going to be kind of a bad time, right? If you can, if at all possible, try to avoid having a driveway that faces north. The reason why is because your house uh, is going to block the sun during those winter months, right? The sun's going to be in the far south during those winter months, and it won't be able to shine onto your driveway to melt off that last little bit of ice. In fact, most of these northern facing driveways will be in the shade almost all day and that ice can stick around for weeks or even months if you drive over the top of it and you aren't diligent about um, actually shoveling it before doing so. So that being said, try to avoid a north facing driveway. Of course, south facing is the best because you're going to get the most exposure, but if you are east or west facing, that's going to be fine as well. Next up, you might actually find that it's warmer on snow days because of the natural insulation that you you kind of
kind of get from that snow. Everybody's heard the term, the warm before the storm. This is something that happens every time there's a storm that comes in, it gets a little bit warm the day before, and that warmth can actually kind of carry over into the day where it's actually snowing. So if you go outside on a snowy day, it might actually be warmer than the day after or two days later when it actually gets much colder. So it's just something to kind of note there uh, that is a surprising phenomenon here in Utah. And you know, as I say that, I don't know if this is actually a Utah thing. This might be how it is everywhere. I've never really thought about that, but it is something that I kind of noticed about that, which I thought was interesting. And so I wanted to throw it here in this video. Now, the other thing about winter, when it comes to the weather that we have here, the temperature that we experience here in Utah sits right around that freezing level, right? Overnight, the temperature might be sitting in that low 20 degree range. And then during the day, it can often warm up to about 30, maybe 35, maybe even 40 degrees on a very warm day here in the winter. So we sit right around that 32 degree um, freezing point, which means that you'll get a lot of snow that actually melts during the day, turns to water, kind of sits on the driveway or on the sidewalk, and then will freeze overnight. So it can get very slippery. You can get ice. And this is something to kind of be aware of, especially if you're driving at night. This can be something that can be a little bit concerning. That's why they do put salt down on the roads. Um, generally, ice on the roads is not too crazy. We will get it. It is something that you have to watch out for, but it's not too bad, especially like compared to some of the Northeast cities. It actually seems to be much more manageable here. And the seventh thing I want to share about on our list here today is that the snow here in the valley actually melts up between storms most times. In the mountains, you're going to have snow from about November all the way through May or even June. That snow is going to stick around. Now on the roads, of course, it's going to melt off. They're going to plow it or whatever, but on the trails and stuff, it's going to stay. However, in the valley, a lot of that snow will melt in between storms and it becomes something that you don't really have to worry about. So during the snowstorm, you're going to get, you know, maybe two, four, six, maybe even 12 inches of snow, but then you'll go a couple days where it'll get really sunny, such as today, and then you'll be able to see that snow melt off and it won't become as much of an issue, you know, as far as seeing it kind of on the roads and on the grass and just all around town, right? So um, something to kind of note there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and also consider reaching out to me if you're thinking about making a move here to Utah or you already live in the area and you want to buy or sell real estate. I want to be your trusted real estate resource when it comes to living here in Utah and buying real estate or even selling real estate, maybe investing in real estate, anything real estate related. Let's talk about it. My information's here on the screen. Call, text, or email anytime. And thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.